And over the last 24 hours or so, there has been intensifying exchanges of fire between Israel and Hezbollah militants that operate inside Lebanon. Hezbollah is a, a, a terrorist organization that gets support from Iran, but operates as a quasi-governmental force really inside the borders of Lebanon. They've been going back and forth with Israel over the last seven days. United Nations peacekeepers who operate inside southern Lebanon say that their headquarters was hit by a wayward rocket. Luckily, no one was hurt there, but it gives you a sense of the situation along that border with Israel now saying that people who live within two kilometers of that border should evacuate. 28 villages concerned. Our Matthew Chance is in northern Israel, not far from that border right now. Matthew, give us the situation. Yeah, a very tense situation up here close to the Lebanese border. You're right. Uh, within the past few hours, the Israeli military has ordered 28 uh, Israeli communities to evacuate from their uh, positions very close to that frontier with, with Lebanon. Uh, and so that's in process now. And that follows a string of cross-border attacks that have been taking place over the course of the past 24 hours, or, or in fact even longer than that. But nine rocket attacks, according to uh, the Israeli Defense Forces, over the course of the past 24 hours. They've responded to that with airstrikes and artillery strikes, some of which we could hear uh, being launched from very close to this location here, close to the um, Lebanese uh, border. We we're also able, though, to gain some access to that exclusion zone close to the border. It's actually four kilometres, about two and a half miles uh, back from the border that they've now said is off limits uh, to Israeli civilians. They gave us access and showed us where the uh, basically that the front lines uh, were. Um, it's also the place, remember, which could uh, really turn this conflict inside Israel into a much broader regional war. And so it's, it's a very dangerous sort of tipping point here in northern Israel still. All the civilians that we talk to, we talk to most of them at least, um, the soldiers, the politicians that I've been in contact with as well, um, they are so enraged, uh, so angry at what happened in Gaza last weekend that they say they are ready even bristling uh, for a fight with Hezbollah. Take a listen to what one Israeli commander told me right close to the Lebanese border. Are you hopeful still that Hezbollah will stay out of this war? I hope there will be another front. We need to destroy Hezbollah. You, you hope there will be another front? Yes. You want the war? Yes. Why? What Hamas did in Gaza, it didn't come from nowhere. It came from Hezbollah, it came from Iran. And in order for us to stop what happened from Hamas, we need to stop them also. Yeah, John, and the big difference now, of course, is that for some reason the Israeli military were not ready uh, in, during the Gaza attacks. They are very ready up here in the north of the country. Matthew, it was really extraordinary to see him pointing right there. It gives you a sense of how close they are. He was merely just pointing a little bit north to where Hezbollah operates with his extremely powerful and well-trained militias. Matthew Chance in northern Israel, please stay safe. U.S. Secretary of State Tony Blinken is back in Israel today. He's been in the region, traveling all throughout the region for days now. We're standing by to see if Blinken will speak to reporters this hour. A critical update potentially coming from him, given the news that you just reported, John. The IDF offered this also, this sobering update on the hostages taken by Hamas terrorists. They now believe 199 people are being held hostage by Hamas in Gaza. They've also said over the weekend that some may have been killed in transit, if you will, during the trip from Israel into Gaza. Sarah Seidner is right now in Haifa, Israel, where U.S. evacuations are underway. Hey, Sarah. Hey, uh, Kate and John, um, it's good to see you guys uh, there safe and sound. We are safe and sound at the moment here in Haifa, Israel, where we have just watched in the last two hours uh, a huge ship taking away Americans out of the danger zone and into Cyprus. We'll get to that in just a minute. But first, I want to go to our Jeremy Diamond, uh, who has been tracking uh, the whereabouts and, and the conversations uh, that Anthony Blinken has been having, the Secretary of State, here for the second time in just a week. Uh, as Israel prepares for a potential ground war with Gaza and as this war rages on. What can you tell us, Jeremy, about the plans here, uh, what Secretary Blinken is doing back here, again, why it was so important for him to show up 
in this country a second time in such a short amount of time. Well, Sarah, just to give you a sense of how fluid uh, the situation on the ground is right now, the secretary of even the reporters traveling with the secretary of state really haven't had a clear sense of exactly who he's been meeting with and when, although we did just get a readout uh, from the secretary of state spokesman uh, that he did indeed meet with the Israeli prime minister, as well as the president of Israel, Isaac Herzog. And in these uh, readouts, we don't have a ton of details. But it's clear uh, what the focus of these discussions is. Uh, it is uh, the release of those uh, hostages being held in Gaza. And it is, of course, uh, the uh, situation regarding humanitarian aid being able to flow into Gaza and having Americans who are trapped in Gaza be able to exit southward uh, and into Egypt. Over the, over the last several days, there has been a lot of finger pointing, a lot of conflicting information uh, concerning when or whether that Rafah crossing between Gaza and Egypt uh, might indeed open. The Egyptian officials have uh, blamed the Israelis at, time, uh, at times, uh, and there's been a lot of uh, conflicting information. U.S. Embassy officials telling Americans inside of Gaza to head for that crossing, expecting it to open. But as of yet, uh, we have not seen any evidence that that crossing has indeed opened. So the question is whether at the end of this day, as the Secretary of State concludes a series of meetings with Israeli officials, uh, whether we will be in a place where humanitarian aid will start flowing into Gaza and whether those Americans and perhaps other civilians will be able to exit Gaza uh, and into Egypt. Uh, amid all of this, we also have the Israeli Prime Minister inviting President President Joe Biden to come visit uh, Israel. Uh, the president uh, so far not confirming whether or not he intends to visit Israel, but we do know that today he was scheduled to take a trip to Colorado. He canceled that trip at the last minute, staying at the White House instead for what they are describing as national security meetings. Whether that is a prelude to a presidential visit here to Israel, we do not yet know. Uh, but of course, the situation on the ground remains extremely fluid. We just had uh, sirens nearby here in Jerusalem, rockets being fired in Central Central Israel uh, and all of this again amid preparations by Israel for a potential ground invasion. Sarah. Jerry Diamond, you have been so uh, great on this story. Thank you so much uh, for, for breaking that down for us. Another important uh, meeting between the U.S. Secretary of State and many of the leadership here uh, in Israel. I do want to mention uh, why I'm here and why I'm where I am in Haifa. We are about 85 miles from the Lebanon border where there have been rockets that have come over, uh, but far, far, far fewer uh, than what has come out uh, of Gaza shot by Hamas. Here, rockets coming over the border because of Hezbollah. Uh, a sworn enemy of Israel's. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it has been quiet here in the north. But what has also happened is that the United States has been getting so many inquiries from Americans who can't simply get out of Israel during wartime, many of them with children who are concerned about their safety, both mentally and physically. Finally, the United States was able to charter a, an enormous ship. Uh, that left from this port a couple of hours ago. And on it were American families who had been stuck here for days uh, as the war raged on, unable to leave because there aren't enough flights. Those flights are very sparse and almost all of them are completely packed leaving Israel. So this was one way to try to get hundreds of Americans out of Israel. They just uh, took this. They are currently in the water on a 10 hour uh, travel time to Cyprus, which is where they will get off and be able to book their flights uh, back to the United States. We spoke to several families about why they came. Uh, many of them live here in Israel. They are American citizens who have chosen to live here in Israel. Some of them have been helping troops on the border with Lebanon, taking them supplies, trying to do their part for the war effort. But, but many just said, look, it is time for us uh, to get our kids to safety and to uh, calm the nerves of our family members who have been watching all this from the United States. Take a listen. We're U.S. citizens, and the U.S. Embassy made it pretty easy to have a way. Um, and if for some reason the borders are closed, we'll swim back. All right, so you heard that. Uh, she also said, look, we are coming back. And all of them said the same thing. We will be back in Israel. Uh, we consider this our home as well. Uh, no matter how long it takes, we will be back here uh, to this country, a country that they love as much as the United States.